this is the molecular genetics uh, lab, which is present in the clinical genomic center in Alexandria Faculty of Medicine in the new hospital. Now, the lab is divided into partitions. This partition that we are seeing here is the area where, where the actual work is undertaken. And uh, the equipments that we, ha we have here are the, uh, the one that we use for the, uh, for the uh, capillary electrophoresis or for uh, the analysis of DNA fragments, which is uh, an advanced piece of equipment. This equipment here that you are seeing is the one that is used for uh, DNA sequencing, but that was by the manual method. And now it is just used for uh, certain types of analysis, but all sequencing is now carried out by automation. Um, this part here we will not be concerned with, but you just know that we have a facility for doing screening for newborn, for the newborn, for certain metabolic disorders. But this will not be included in our uh, uh, section of the uh, molecular genetics because it's a biochemical genetics. Now, this part here is a cabinet. It, as you see, it is a closed cabinet with a window. And the, uh, when we are working here, we just introduce the hands with, uh, with gloves. So it is completely, it has to be completely sterile and extreme care is taken in order not to cause any contamination. What we are going to do now is to prepare a PCR reaction. The PCR reaction is the standard technique that is used in all molecular genetics testing. So now I will show you what do we add in a tube in order to prepare a PCR. The standard reaction for all molecular genetics work. Now this part of this part of the uh, genomic center is the lab for DNA extraction, which is the first step in any molecular genetics work. You have to extract the DNA from a sample, which can be a blood sample. As you see here, we're taking a blood sample, putting it in in a tube what he, show us the tube please so here we have a blood sample in a tube and then we use certain buffers first one is to lyse the RBCs because the DNA is extracted from the white blood cells, so we don't need the RBCs. A very important thing that we must note is that everything when you are handling biological samples it has to be in a closed sterile cabinet as you see here just the hands of the uh, person who is working are, inter are, are introduced in the laminar flow cabinet which is a completely sterile atmosphere there will be treatment with different buffers for the blood sample in order to extract the DNA. From the white blood cells. 
some of the steps include to add a protein precipitation solution to get rid of the, pro of the proteins that are stuck to the DNA and leave the DNA in suspension. And following this, once we get rid of the, uh, of the uh, impurities, proteins, and different things, we end up with our DNA sample that appears as thread-like cotton, fluffy cotton in appearance, which we precipitate and use it after being resuspended. Now this tube here you are seeing is the DNA sample. It, is, it has been extracted as we have seen just uh, earlier and is suspended in a buffer or in water. And this is the sample that we are going to test. For preparing PCR reaction, you need to have a primer, a forward primer, which is composed of a number of nucleotides, a sequence of nucleotides. If you see here, this is a specific sequence of nucleotide which is complementary to a certain part of interest in our DNA sample. We use a forward primer and a reverse primer to cover the part that we are interested in. And I will show you this later in a demonstration during our practical class. Now here I'm adding the forward primer into the tube. And then I'm adding the reverse primer into the PCR tube. Yeah? So now I am covering the part from one end, from the five prime end, and I'm covering this, the, other, the three prime end of the segment that I'm going to amplify. Now, when, in order to do an in vitro DNA amplification, it resembles the DNA replication. So it, this needs the presence of enzyme. Now, the enzyme that we use is the TAC polymerase enzyme. So I have to add to the PCR tube TAC polymerase enzyme and its buffer. And this is what we are adding now. Right? Right. Yeah. Now the last remaining thing that I must be added is the DNA sample, which is going to be amplified. Now our PCR tube is ready to be placed in the PCR machine. And PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. And it is going to be done automatically by an automated thermal cycler. We mean by an automated thermal cycler. We mean by automated thermal cycler uh, that it's going to change the temperature automatically. The, the PCR reaction composed of three stages. The first stage is denaturation, where the temperature is increased to 95 degrees for some time, like a few minutes, three minutes or so, and uh, in order to separate the two strands of the 
of the DNA. The double-stranded DNA get denatured when the two strands separate. So you can see here from this digital screen that the temperature is increasing. This is the actual temperature of the block where the tube were placed. And it is increasing gradually till it reaches 95 degrees centigrade. Once it reaches this temperature, it, the time is going to go down automatically until the adjusted time is finished. Uh, now you can see that the temperature is going down, remaining just about 10 seconds. So this is the initial denaturation at, at 95 degrees for about 3 minutes. This is the first phase. Now we entered into a, the, the uh, repetitive cycles. This is the first bit of it, which is again denaturation, but just for a few seconds, 30 seconds. It's counting down. Ten seconds remaining, and then we are going to go to the second phase of the cycling, which is annealing temperature. You can see here that the annealing temperature is, goes down to 61 degrees. And we mean by the annealing temperature that the primers are going to stick to the part which, uh, to the complementary uh, sequence on the part of DNA of interest. It's going down from 40 seconds down to zero. And then we'll go to the third phase. Now it's moving to the extension temperature, which is around 70, between 70 and 72. Here our program is at 71. And this is the optimum temperature where the enzyme is going to uh, carry out the reaction f of extension between the primers in order to cover the part of the DNA that we want to amplify. So this three cycles of denaturation, annealing, extension will be repeated for a number of times that is between 30 and 40 depending on the segment that we of DNA that we are going to amplify. The PCR finishes in the thermal cycler. We are going to load the sample on a gel. This is the gel here, as you see. We will load the sample with a loading buffer to which a blue dye is added to follow the movement of the DNA between the negative electrode towards the positive electrode. The red is the positive electrode and the black the, uh, electrode here is the negative electrode. You know that the DNA is a negatively charged molecule due to the presence of the phosphates, so it migrates in the gel through the buffer from the negative electrode towards the positive electrode. Now this is the sample here after it has been amplified in the thermal cycler. We take little amount of it, we add it to the loading buffer, mix it and then load it on the gel. There are wells inside the gel in which the sample is loaded. Of course, this migration is dependent on electric current. So you see here this piece of equipment is the power source. And the reading here is the voltage, 75 volts, used for the electrophoresis process to allow migration of the 
DNA fragment that we are interested in. If you see the blue line here, this is the dye of our sample. It has migrated from the well up there down towards the positive pole or the positive electrode. Now this is the, uh, the, the, the ultraviolet, right? This is the gel here. This is the marker, the DNA marker, which is used as a reference in order to know where our bands are. This gel that we have seen with the UV trans illuminator will be captured with uh, a camera in order to transfer the gel image to the computer. Here, the gel image has been transferred to the computer for analysis of the results. So for PCR to be undertaken, you must know the sequence of the DNA fragment that you are going to amplify and you must also know the type of mutation that you are looking for.